Okay, what I want to talk about is uh, test automation. Uh, traditionally, this is done with tools like Selenium uh, to drive, a, at least a, on the web, to, uh, to drive a, drive a web a browser um, through code. Um, well, I want to talk about a tool I've been using lately called a Puppeteer. So this is by the Google Chrome team. Uh, you can see it on their GitHub account, their GitHub page, and you can install it with NPM. It, it makes um, test web test automation super simple to get started with. Uh, it's just a Node API, um, and it gives you access to Chrome or Chromium. Over um, you can run it headless, uh, which headless is basically um, without the UI, so on a terminal or maybe on a, on a server, maybe a CI server, you want to run some, some automation um, or some other job where, uh, or you can um, run it non-headless where you're, you're watching, the, watching the code drive the browser. Um, it also uh, goes over the dev tools protocol, so basically almost any information that you would normally see in the dev tools uh, uh, let me see. So, um, like the network tab and console, a lot of this information will be also available um, to you via Puppeteer. Uh, you can generate screenshots and PDFs, um, crawl pages. You can use it for things like screen scraping, um, automation, end-to-end uh, -end tests, um, maybe just automating some tedious user entry. Um, and uh, I mean, it's really powerful, though. Um, you can also use it to capture traces of your site and diagnose performance issues, which would be super great. You could have, uh, maybe you have an end-to-end -end test and you could have it fail, fail a build or, or at least notify you that, um, you know, this page is taking too long to render content to the user or something like that. If you have some, some guidelines around, you know, what's acceptable performance for your site. Um, so like I said, you could just inst uh, use NPM to install Puppeteer. It already comes prepackaged with Chromium, so well, that's really nice. So it's, it's almost guaranteed to work on uh, any platform. Um, if you do want to point it to, so Chromium is like an open source version of Chrome. I've had no issues with it, but if you want to point it to actual Chrome, you can do that. There's some instructions in, uh, on, in their documentation. Um, you just have to do it wherever your Chrome is installed on your machine. Uh, and it's a little bit different on Mac and Windows. Anyways, uh, but you know, it's like I said, it's simple to get started with. Uh, you can launch a browser instance, go to a page, um, give it a URL, and in this case, they're, they're just taking a screenshot and closing the browser. Um, let's see, let's see what other examples they have. A PDF, um, generate a PDF artifact of, of whatever it's doing. Um, you can evaluate some JavaScript in the uh, Chromium uh, Chromium browser. Log that back out to your test or your your Node code. Um, all kinds of things you can do. Um, I'm gonna ha have a series of other videos where I talk about how how we use it on, on my current project, and um, we'll get into that a little bit. I I will talk um, a little bit about how you get access to things uh, um, on a page when you're trying to click a button or type into an input field and and basically what it what it uses is a query selector type syntax so if you're if you use jQuery before this may sound familiar um, but it's you know just vanilla JavaScript document query selector um, so like for instance on this page uh, if I wanted to do some test automation um, uh, let's see but maybe I Maybe I want to grab this value um, uh, in my in my code. All right, so I might inspect and see. Okay, how can I how can I get a handle on this? Um, well, if I wanted to grab the div around here, say document dash title is a a class name. So um, let me see in the console. Um, what you can say is document dot query selector um, for a class. I've done this one before. Document title, um, and so if I cover over this, you kind of you see how it's highlighted over here, um, and you know I can. So the query selector uh, gives you a handle on the DOM element. You know you can select by ID, uh, class. Um, so all kinds of crazy things you can do are descendants. Um, there's 
they can get kind of complicated. It's a lot simpler if you um, if you do have a unique ID or class name that you can select for. That just makes it easy. Um, sometimes what's useful to uh, automators is if uh, the developer doing the website would add some. Sometimes we add IDs just for to help the test automation uh, determinism. So you can use data dash uh, anything you want. Data dash uh, test automation, whatever. Um, and that sometimes is, is a, it's just a, a handy thing to have in place um, to help your automation team. Um, so that is about it on Puppeteer. Uh, in the next few videos, I'll talk about how we use it on our current project.